it's developed, I would say, over from when we started in 2013 to where we are now, 2019. I think it's grown as we've grown and as the business has grown. It's professional work. Our ethos is very basic, to make the best pizza we can possible and by doing that, uh, using the best ingredients possible. But that's the exciting part now for us, is to be as authentically Irish as possible and use these unbelievable producers that we have on our doorstep and use pizza as a blank canvas. Putting our twist on it and using the best suppliers that we have on our doorstep. Dobo's mission, that's deep. Why can't the best pizzeria in the world be here in the west of Ireland, in Galway? You know, I'm not saying it's a big ambition to have. We just want to be better and better, I suppose, every day. Irish producers and us as a country, gastronomically, is starting to stand up and put its chest out and putting it up there with the best of them. So why can't we think like that as well? We love what we do and we love pizza. So I suppose merging all those, we're just very dedicated into constantly improving each and every day. We're celebrating what Ireland has to offer here. <laughs> you know, we're talking world-class produce like Kubin down in Cork making unbelievable charcuterie meats. Like Toby from Toonsbridge, who makes mozzarella better than anywhere I've tasted in the world. People like Noel's Honey there out in Loch Ray or out that direction, who makes unbelievable raw honey, which again is second to none anywhere we've had in the world. Fingal Ferguson, to put lightly, is a genius. He is the creator behind the charcuterie section down in Gubin, which is a second generation farm in Skull in County Cork. If people don't know about Gubin, very simply, it's a farm, but it's almost like this magical, mythical place that it has to be seen to be believed. We pulled up to the farm and you see the array of awards, endless stream of awards on the side of the building. Everything that is in place on there was mind-blowing. Going down and seeing the smokehouse for the first time was unbelievable. They get the meat from their own pigs or they use the co-op. Taking the meat in, doing their mixes, starting the fermentation process, then putting it into the casing. All the chorizos, all the sobrasadas, everything in their casing, hanging up being smoked, and the smell of the oak was unbelievable. They're all just the most creative people, but the most fun behind it. You walk around each element of the farm from Fingal, who was non-stop crack, from the second you met him, but still, while having crack, probably the most knowledgeable, passionate person I've ever met. So all this time while we were having fun and we were split our sides laughing and having the crack, he was imparting the most incredible depth of knowledge that my small brain couldn't handle. Just this multi-talented family, you've got the parents that started out making gooping cheese and smoked cheeses, which is where it all began, are still out working now. You went round to the back of the farm, they're out running after pigs and running after cows and a little gosling that was being born, and that's how passionate they are. They're still working today, they're still pushing themselves. We're now working with Toby down in Toonsbridge on a cow's milk fior de latte, which to us is an absolute world-class product. Buffalo mozzarella would obviously be a huge staple in Neapolitan pizzerias. I suppose for us, our version has taken maybe the fundamentals of Neapolitan pizza and doing our thing with it, so being authentic and true to ourselves. Prior to my training in Naples, we one day we went out to a Buffalo mozzarella farm. The first time I got to see mozzarella being made and stretched firsthand, Toby, in fairness, let us get our hands dirty and actually make some burrata ourselves, which was, again, an unbelievable experience. <laughs> we were down there at six o'clock in the morning, um, making it by <laughs> 10 minutes ago, you just like, oh, getting in that bed now. I getting in one. that bed. <laughs> Yeah, no, we were supposed to be there at six in the morning. Yeah, exactly. We slept in until half ten. <laughs> it's cow's milk mozzarella. Should we say that at some point? Travelled all over the world, we've had plenty of cheese. We're firm believers that the cheese that Toby makes for pizza, reacting with the wood fired oven on our dough, is absolutely second to none. It's a top class product. When you're a pizzeria, your main product is your cheese. And once we're able to put an Irish mozzarella on the pizza, I think that really was the start of then the charcuterie meats and the, the rest of it. That was kind of the springboard really in terms of a real change in our ethos. Because it has to be the right consistency. 
it's going into a wood-fired oven at 500 degrees. Our product is obviously very thin, so to get that consistency right where it's not too wet, not too stringy. Why pizza in Naples is so good is because of the regionality of it. But Naples has their caserta, we have our West Cork. This is what we call, there's a full on house. At that time of the day, so there, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff happening in the hive, okay? You can stand in around the back of the hive, guys. Yeah. Heather, will you bring the frame, the brood box, out of the shed? That's all your fresh wax. Yeah. yeah. This is it at the start. Okay. And this is it when they start building it. Yeah. So they'll build it up and up and up to create the cells. So when we were in New York, myself and Eugene, we did a pizza research trip for about eight or nine days. Our favorite pizzeria was Roberta's in Brooklyn. But one product we had over there we used a hot honey. So it's a honey infused with a specific chili. We came back from being like, wow, we need to do something about this. Mike's Hot Honey is a, a product in America that's blowing up. It's like the new Frank's Hot Sauce is what everyone is kind of using over there. We could have been, and we were at the start, the only restaurant, I think, in Ireland that had imported it from America and were using it. But we were, after bringing it in, it was like, why are we importing this? We could make it better here in Ireland. We have Noel's Honey out here in, in Loch Ray, Steve Oakley Honey. Why don't we get him to make it, make it unique? Yes, infuse it with chilies, but how can we make it unique here to Ireland? And we know Noel for years. Do you know, we started off in markets obviously with the food truck and Noel would always be a couple of stalls beside us. We'd always exchange honey for pizza. We rang up Noel one day, told him about what we had over in the States. He was buzzing to come on board and to make this chili honey. And rather than make a chili honey, we wanted to better the one that we had over there. It's not just chili and honey, there's a couple other ingredients in there that add definitely an Irish signature twist. So that's what we've done with him. We've gone out and we made him tweak it with with the honey, but also some Irish products that give it that unique flavor that nobody else can do. So yeah, you can go to New York, you can have Mike's Hot Honey, you can go to Barcelona, you can go, but you won't have the honey we have, because that's unique to us here in Galway. So that's something that, you know, gives us pride that when we serve it, we know that no one else can do it. Come on, we'll put on the kettle again. So the purpose of getting down to Cork and staying with the likes of Fingal and Toby, for one was to learn firsthand, I suppose, and to educate ourselves on you know the world-class produce that we do have here at our fingertips. And two, to take that knowledge and build it into a menu where I suppose is reflective of where we are today. Take the Peter Stinger, for example. Fresh Fjord latte from Toby, Gooby and Chorizo, one of Fingal's finest, and both ours and Noel's creation, the funky hot honey. What's next for the Dobros? It's a question we're constantly asking ourselves, especially from the menu point of view. I don't want to sound cheesy with that. We have some really exciting products and, and new menus coming down the line. We're never ones across the board for standing still and resting on our laurels. We always want to keep pushing the boundaries. And we have something coming up that we think is going to be really cool. There's a lot going on in O'Connell's now at the moment. Absolutely unbelievable. It's next level to keep building on that and to make this restaurant the best it can be. Look, we've put a lot of work into this menu, but we've had a lot of fun doing it, and we can't wait for you to come in and try it. Just get in, folks, and eat it, and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>